Daniel Ricciardo to Alpha Tauri isn't the only shocking move that Red Bull are working on these days. As just a day before the Honey Badger return was announced, very good sources from the paddock said that the team is working on bringing a replacement for Sergio Perez. And trust me, it's a surprising one. But this is not just their plan, it's also Liberty Media, the owner of F1's plan as well, as they attempt to make the sport more interesting even if one team is dominating. So what would Perez's replacement be? What consequences that will have on the sport? Sergio Perez is having a disappointing season. And with the RB19 on your disposal, in the state in which the car is, that's simply unacceptable even if you're a driver of a weaker caliber and not called Max Verstappen. Despite Red Bull being adamant that they remain supportive of Sergio Perez and have no immediate plans to substitute him as his contract extends until the end of 2024, it seems his position may not be entirely secure. This is especially so given that Max Verstappen is currently displaying such a commanding performance, he could single-handedly win the Constructors' Championship. The lack of a capable and available replacement for Perez is something Helmut Marko has acknowledged, although this dynamic could shift with the impending comeback of Daniel Ricciardo, a Red Bull reserve, to an active racing role with Alpha Tauri. However, Daniel Ricciardo might not be the only candidate, or even the one being considered, but we'll get to that later on. Now, after a series of disappointing performances, culminating in a fifth consecutive Q1 exit at Silverstone, Sergio Perez indicated that his struggles with the car become more noticeable under changeable low-grip conditions. Despite starting the race from the 15th position and managing to claw his way back to the 6th place, Perez acknowledged his sensitivity to the car had increased in recent races, particularly during low fuel situations on Saturdays. Red Bull has not offered a concrete explanation, either publicly or privately, for this situation. However, team principal Christian Horner's comments suggest a psychological factor. In the previous races in Spain and Canada, Horner had discussed the impact of pressure and suggested that Perez was perhaps putting too much on himself in his bid to become a champion. The implication was that Perez needed to relax but was struggling to heed this advice. Now, following the Silverstone race, Horner implied that Perez's personal psychology might be the main problem. He remarked, As in all sport, 90% of it is in the head reinforcing the idea that mental factors could be affecting Perez's performance. It's not uncommon for drivers to come up with intangible reasons for a sudden drop in performance. Similarly, Red Bull could still uncover a hidden technical issue that explains Perez's difficulties. However, the fact that both Perez and Horner are referencing a recurring pattern and that Perez is resorting to simulator work to rectify this pattern indicates the issue might be specific to Perez's approach to handling the RB19. This is why Helmut Marko is looking for a potential replacement behind the scenes while still publicly supporting Perez for the remainder of this season. And one of those potential candidates is none other than Lando Norris himself. The sight of Lando Norris's manager, Mark Berryman, in discussion with Red Bull's motorsport advisor, Helmut Marko, would be a common occurrence during the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Such discussions are frequent in the paddock. However, this particular exchange attracted attention due to the current state of affairs in Red Bull. Berryman, who's been managing Norris since his karting days, also manages a roster of other drivers at ADD Management. Among them is F2 driver Zane Maloney, a part of the Red Bull Junior program, making it likely that the discussion between Marco and Berryman centered around Maloney's future. At the same time, 14-year-old Freddie Slater, another one of Berryman's prospects, won the KZ2 European Karting Championship, offering a delightful coincidence. However, it would be remiss to think that Berryman and Marco wouldn't discuss the exceptional form of Norris, a McLaren driver. Norris's recent performances have been stellar, particularly his second-place finish at Silverstone, following a fourth-place finish in Austria. Moreover, he showed immense composure in overtaking Max Verstappen and holding off Lewis Hamilton in the race, earning praise from Hamilton himself. With Sergio Perez, Red Bull's second driver, currently experiencing a poor run of form, speculation is rife about Norris possibly replacing him. Perez managed to qualify only 15th at Silverstone, marking the fifth consecutive race in which he failed to make it into Q3. Despite this, Red Bull publicly supports Perez, with Marco firmly stating that Perez's position is secure until his contract ends next season. 
Red Bull's continued support for Perez is also due to their strong market presence in Latin America and Perez's previous contributions to the team. Norris's contract with McLaren, however, is solid until the end of 2025, and he's consistently asserted his intention to honour it. Furthermore, McLaren's recent form and the influence of Andrea Stella, the new team principal, make it less likely for Norris to consider leaving. Should Red Bull decide to replace Perez, it isn't certain Norris would be their first choice. Alex Albon, a former Red Bull junior driver performing well at Williams, could be a more feasible option due to his ties with Red Bull's tie ownership and possibly lower cost. However, the unpredictable nature of F1 means things could change rapidly. If Perez's form continues to dip, or if McLaren's resurgence proves fleeting, speculation about Norris's potential move to Red Bull could intensify. In my opinion, the prospect of this happening would certainly be very exciting for the sport, similar to what Mercedes has done by having both Hamilton and Russell on their team. Indeed, if a title fight was on the line, these two would be going head-to-head -head if their car was competitive enough for the championship, and it could create a highly entertaining dynamic even if theirs was the only competitive car on the grid, reminiscent of the 2016 situation with Hamilton and Rosberg. Red Bull has adopted a different approach over the past few years, relying on Max and the support driver, which is currently Perez. While this strategy works well for Max and the team's overall success, it might not hold up in the long term if other teams start to catch up. To win the driver's title and consistently secure the constructors' championship, Max will likely need support from his teammates, as Mercedes, Ferrari and potentially Aston Martin, once they partner with Honda and become a works team, continue to improve, Red Bull may need to emulate Mercedes' strategy of having two primary drivers. Of course, the team will still primarily revolve around Max, given the excellent relationship and chemistry they share. However, it's challenging to envision any driver joining Max and truly challenging him at this point. Yet, if there are two drivers from the next generation capable of doing so, they would likely be Norris and probably Leclerc, with Russell already being at Mercedes. It would be incredibly interesting to see how such a dynamic would play out in the coming seasons. Red Bull's interest in having a stronger second driver isn't just about the team's aspirations, but it's also influenced by the broader direction of the sport. During Bernie Eccleston's reign, it wasn't uncommon for him to persuade teams to sign specific drivers if it would benefit the sport overall. This trend seems to continue under Liberty Media, the current owners of Formula One. They're keen on urging top teams to have two competitive drivers, aiming for every season to be captivating for the audience. Take 2014 and 2016 as examples. Even though Mercedes had a dominant car, these seasons were still thrilling because there was an ongoing championship battle for the win and intense race-to-race -race duels. Recently, we've gotten used to races where the fight for the second place is more compelling, with Max Verstappen typically clinching the win. Yet, it's not quite the same as having two drivers of similar prowess in a potentially dominant car battling it out. Creating a scenario like in 2021, where two teams and two drivers pushed each other to the limits over the course of the season, culminating in a controversial finish is challenging. However, the intention is that even if a dominant car emerges, which is often the case in Formula 1, at least there should be a competitive championship battle. This is what Liberty Media strives for, ensuring compelling competition and fan engagement, regardless of the potential dominance of one team or car. Whether they're in the right in doing so or not may come down to moral reasons much more than anything. So what are your thoughts? Do you think Lando could potentially join Red Bull to create a dream team with Max Verstappen? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next one.